before you hear me talk about this amazing place, let me just show you some of its beauty. Anyone know where this African country is, what it's called, any guesses, write down in the comments right now. This is what I did when I saw San Tome for the first time. I did the research so you guys won't have to, so sit back and watch all things San Tome, including some of the best YouTube pages to check out. Yes, I did weeks and weeks of research. Well, I'm a TV producer and research is what I do for a living, but I also low-key get obsessed with places and I have to know every single thing about it. I decided to make this video to save you guys the time. So before we go into the specifics of what this video has to offer, let's just check out this dope clip from Destination Africa that shows the swag and the elegance and the essence of San Tome.
vibe. I showed my boyfriend for the first time and he was like, oh, it's near Gabon and it's the Garden of Eden and that pretty much summed it up for me. Okay, so in this video, these are all the things that I'm going to be going over. They're just going to pop up here on the screen. This is just more of a quick introduction video to San Tome. I'll do an in-depth video if you want to know more about like the nightlife, if you want to know more about investment opportunities and different things that I want to know about. That will come in the future, but just sit back and enjoy and go on this mini vacation. <laughs> I normally do not turn to white people to learn about black countries, right? That, For that reason, I'll go into it into a whole nother video. But I have to give credit where credit's due, and Geography Now has an amazing video on San Tome that breaks down all the different aspects of the country, starting with the geography. Let's check out a small clip of that video right now, and all the other links will be in the bio if you want to watch the full clip. First of all, the country is located in the Gulf of Guinea, or more specifically, the Bight of Bonny, the inlet in the Atlantic Ocean where West Africa curves downward into Central Africa. The country is made up of two main islands, San Tome, the larger one, with about 86% of the land mass and 96% of the population and the smaller Principe Island, which is actually an autonomous region within the country that self-governs itself with its own assembly. Amidst these two main islands are groups of smaller satellite islets and rocks, such as Rolas and Cabras off of Sao Tome, as well as the Tinosa Islands, Corozo, and Bombom in the north by Principe. Their maritime boundaries extend outwards with other neighboring countries. However, in the north, they have a joint development zone with Nigeria. The country is divided into seven districts, six on Sao Tome Island, and the entire island of Principe Principe is, within itself, the last district, called Pagay. The capital is named, just like the country, Sao Tome, which holds about a quarter of the entire population. After that, Santo Amaro and Neves come in as the second and third largest towns. The country's largest and only international airport, Sao Tome International, is located on the north side of Sao Tome Island, and only three countries have flight services to Sao Tome, Portugal, Angola, and Cape Verde. Otherwise, to get in between the two main islands of this country, you have two options, flight or ferry. Flights operate three to five times a week, depending on the season between Sao Tome International and Principe Airport, the only other airport of the country. The flight takes about 45 minutes and lands on a short airstrip that can only accommodate 18-seater twin turboprop aircrafts from the national airline Africa's Connection STP. Otherwise, with ferries, things are a little more complex. There is irregular passenger ferry services between the island's largest ports, the port of Ana Chavez Bay, where the military and cargo ships dock as well, and Santo Antonio Port on Principe. The trip lasts anywhere between 8 to 12 hours and bookings must be made at the office offices in person. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video for the five top reasons why you need to visit San Tope, including one that is going to be on your bucket list. Let's, let's, let's get right into it. When it comes to the history of places, this is something I tend to do only once I visited a place because especially African countries, a lot of the history is just tied up straight into colonization. Um, history starts once the European touches the lands, which we know is not true, but um, as of now, here's just a clip of like the basic history and then hopefully once I visit, I'll get more in depth on um, the totality of the history. These guys basically discovered the islands in 1469. The first settlement was established. Principe gets its first settlement. Slave trade begins. The legend of the Angolares slave ship shipwreck. Portuguese convicts are sent to the island and encouraged to intermarry with slaves. Royal charter allows mixed race Santomans to hold government positions. The Maroon slave rebellions. Weird time when they were raided by the French pirates. The Dutch came in and took over for like seven years. Slavery abolished, but Portugal still used a weird forced contract payment labor system. Movement for liberation of Sao Tome and Principe was established. Batepa massacre. Independence from Portugal. Democratic reforms in 1990 led to fair free elections. Outside investors considered development, but the process is still in progress. I know some of my black brothers and sisters might see the slavery aspect of the history and be turned off from visiting, but I see it as the opposite. I feel like if we built it, it is ours. So your ancestors laid out the foundation for you to enjoy. More black people need to visit places like San Tome. The only historical fact that wasn't necessarily wrong in that video, but wasn't specified, um, and some of the imagery can be misleading in a lot of videos about San Tome, there's a biblical and religious history that is, I've been studying for about a year now, I'm doing a documentary on it, and it is incorrect in some of the YouTube videos, and it is just misleading in others. I don't even want to go into that because that will take a whole nother hour video to explain what I'm talking about, but I wouldn't be me if I didn't 
and make hints and make note of it. I'm showing you some of these things. This is just kind of what is out there on YouTube now. I'll in the future help break down um, the meaning of some of the history and the truths of some of the history because Santo May holds a key to biblical and religious history that has been hidden um, on purpose. And it's a very special, magical place, and I can't wait to go, and I can't wait to discuss a little bit more. But first, let's just enjoy the island. So you're probably wondering where you should stay. All the websites and the YouTube pages will tell you about Sunday Priya, Roka, Sunday, Boom Boom, Omali. They're all owned by a white tech entrepreneur from South Africa, Mark Shuttlesworth. They um, do look amazing, but me, I tend to look for black owned hotels whenever I can. So I found this, I might pronounce his name, I'm so sorry, Joea Carlos Silva. Um, a celebrity Santo Man chef opened a hotel called, bear with me, Roca Seo Jewe de Angulares Hotel. And um, that had a vibe and that probably was somewhere that I would more likely stay. Um, but I also found this super dope Airbnb called the Mawo House. And okay, just look, just look. I don't even need to explain. Just look at these views from your bed. Look at these views from your bed. So yeah, that would probably be my first choice. But this is the thing. I have to put this disclaimer out there. Wherever I am, whatever country I'm visiting, if I'm going by myself or without my man, I don't tend to stay in Airbnbs. I think it's safer to stay in more populated accommodations, but that's just me. I had to say that. But there's accommodations for any price point. So the first ones I mentioned were roughly around 300 to 400 US a night. Um, the ones that I mentioned that I would stay at are more 200 to $100 a night US, this is. And, but they even have like camping grounds, I believe MIP camping for like $18 a night. Don't tell my man because he'll want to stay there. He loves outdoors. And... So. Restaurants is a thing that I normally don't really highlight because things change so much. Obviously, we're coming out of COVID times and, you know, some restaurants don't make it and it all depends on preference. It is a very seafood, fish-oriented um, cuisine in San Tome, which is right up my alley. I would definitely say, though, the same hotel that I mentioned that is owned by Joe Carlos Silva is also an amazing restaurant. So if you don't stay there, I 100% recommend you dining there. Um, just be aware, and I'll, you can see the pictures right now, it's fine dining, okay? So all you hungry bellies that like like to come eat a whole lot of food, just enjoy the experience. And same thing, the food can span from like touristy prices in some places where you're paying like 20 plus dollars a meal, but to local spots, you could be paying like two to three dollars US a meal. So it all depends. Um, if you guys are like me and like to check out like downtown area and like the like all aspects of the country, like I'm not a person that just is only at the beach. So um, let's hop over to Gino Pop's YouTube page and he gives us a little to walking tour of San Tome, the city center, and even take you into a grocery store or two. So let's check that out. So I just realized that we have a little technical difficulty and you won't be able to hear Gino Pop's voice, so I'll just dictate what he's saying. He called this the boardwalk area. There's a little beach right here. And he's walking us through downtown San Tome. He was saying it kind of resembles when he went to Havana, Cuba. Just, I guess, some of the architecture. He was saying there's not many new, brand new, modern buildings, but this is one of them. This is the International Bank of San Tome and Principe. He was talking about there's ATMs sprinkled around the island. Some only take MasterCard and some only take Visa and some don't work at all. So he was just stressing to make sure you carry cash on you when you come to the island. I think it's important, y'all, to like not just watch the glamorous, edited drone shots of a place and really find some footage where you're walking through like you're there. 
he was marveling at the colonial buildings and the colonialism of it all, which, you know, sometimes, like, colonial is a very sensitive word, but I get it. So he was just kind of talking about the architecture, walking us through the streets. This is a Sunday that he's walking us through. So he was saying it is kind of emptier than he thought it would be. He was talking about the pastel colors of the buildings is very common on San Tome. But it's also Sunday in COVID times. So it, it could be that could have an effect. Because he posted this video in June of 2021. So this seems like it's very recent. He points to the cathedral down that lane that he's going to go to in the background and just kind of he's commenting on the buildings are kind of the wear and tear. Some are refurbished, some aren't. You know, he's talking about the architecture of this building. Now you can tell up top is kind of a little bit deteriorating, but um, then he brings us down to the bottom to show that there are stores there that just happen to be closed because it's Sunday. Hopefully this is recording, y'all. So hopefully I'm trying to give you a little guided tour as what he was telling us. That's the cathedral he's walking up to. And if you can see that pink building to the left, that's the governmental palace where the president, resi president resides. You're not allowed to film there. So that's why he's kind of staying far back. And he's saying there's soldiers there. So he doesn't want to get in trouble. So he's focused on the cathedral. He goes up and basically it's closed because he thought it was surprising because it was Sunday. Why it'd be closed? But hey, it's COVID time. So maybe that's it. I might fast forward some of this, but yes, he goes and checks the door. It's closed. Um, he was highlighting this building, the center of Portuguese culture. And the reason why it makes sense that this is here, I'm not sure if you guys saw the little glimpse of the history. The Portuguese were the first European country to inhabit San Tomé. And Portuguese is actually still the main language that's spoken on the island. And so there are still strong ties to Portugal, even though they got their independence. He was pointing out the mountains in the background and how close it is to the city center, all like the lush vegetation. He was pointing out that there are sinks placed all around the city, probably COVID protocols to make sure you wash your hands before you enter certain buildings, which I think is genius. Um, yeah, I, I don't think he was saying much here, just giving us another tour of a different part of the city center he was talking about the grocery stores and how one of them was closed that he went to earlier today but there's a Chinese grocery store that's open that he's going to take us into I'll probably fast forward some of this footage or I can leave it in here and you guys can fast forward it you know I I like to watch this type of stuff, but it can get a little repetitive since we're not actually there. I love to look at, you know, the cars that are there. Here's some more of the pastel colors. Okay, I'm going to fast forward to the grocery store now. Okay, now we're in the grocery store. He calls it the Chinese grocery store. I'm assuming either because the owners are Chinese or maybe all the products are from China. But he was talking about this is one of the first stores where he was able to see, like, cups and glasses and different things where you can purchase tea kettles and, and different items for your household, not just only groceries, you know, baskets. In Every store he went into, he could almost find wine before he could find water. He was just pointing out how there's always fishermen boats, kind of no matter where you are in the island. And that makes sense because fishing is a huge industry in San Tome. 
It's a huge part of the livelihood. He was pointing out this very unique church that he just had to walk up to. He was saying from the side view, which he's going to take us and look, it looks like a ship. So that's the side view of the church. Unique architecture. There's a lot of churches. Um, Catholicism is the majority religion, probably because of the Portuguese influence. He was pointing out across the water there that um, green and blue building is the main grocery store, but it was closed on Sunday. He was talking about how this is a shipwreck right here. This is remnants of a ship. And um, he was just saying, like, it shows how kind of deep the water can be so close to the shore, showing us some of the money, the dobras, and what it looks like. What's on it? Money, 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 money. And, yeah, that's about it. He gave you a good view of what the what the downtown area look like thank you gino pop okay so here's also a couple instagram pages to make sure you follow and check out so that you just have cool dope images of santa may that are popping up on your timeline so you won't forget about the islands and you'll make sure that you'll visit <laughs>the five top reasons to visit one little to no crime wherever you see that you visit that place so this is one of those two you'll feel like you're on your own personal island like the lush vegetation you'll you'll be able to find beaches where you're the only person there like that's just it's heaven on earth so this is a no-brainer that's a reason to visit three something that i saved and i didn't talk about there's a turtle sanctuary where you can help Hundreds of turtles enter this world. Let me just show you a clip. Four and five might be combined into this one thing, which is bucket list worthy for sure. The equator is located right south of San Tomé, so you can take an hour boat ride to an island that is called this, because I'm going to mispronounce it. And there, you know what? I'm just like sick of seeing my face and talking. So let me just show you the clip from Geography Down. Saltome is actually one of the few places on earth where you can actually touch the equator. In order to do it though, you will have to take a ferry from Porto Alegre in the south to Rolas Island and hike through the forests where there is a mosaic map with a massive place marker monument. For what it's worth though, if you are really intrepid and want to do something that very few people have done, Saltome is probably the best place to depart if you want to try and get to the Null Island buoy. A single lone buoy that sits in international waters marking the coordinates of where the prime meridian meets the equator, or in short, zero degrees longitude and latitude or the center of the earth so who's going to be the super adventurous person that's going to go to the buoy it's not me I'm not doing it but like can you please go and like send me videos and pictures please okay cool well for those of you guys that do not want to leave this beautiful island i have some underwater footage of santa may for you me i like to stay above ground so i'll be leaving you here but i'll see you soon when we talk about cape baird next time Wait, sorry to stop the underwater footage. I had to jump right back out here. I know I said four and five were combined, but five is because it's Africa, full stop, period. Bye.